Following the Jupiter-Saturn triple conjunction of 7-6 BC, the Magi had all the clues they needed to recognize the signs marking the birth of Christ when they began in 3 and 2 BC. There were seven key celestial signs involving the planet Jupiter as the common element as it had been throughout the celestial prelude, marking the births of Abraham and Moses. This series of signs began with the first of two planetary conjunctions of Jupiter and Venus in Leo, the first one on August 12, 3 BC. This revealed the nature of the new morning star, because Venus is the bright morning star, and was followed by three conjunctions of Jupiter and Regulus in Leo, beginning on September 14th of 3 BC through May 8th of 2 BC. These were followed again by the second Jupiter-Venus conjunction in June 17th of 2 BC, and these two Jupiter-Venus signs bracket the three Jupiter-Regulus unions which mark the birth of Christ and disclose the identity of the new bright morning star. Finally, this was followed by a massing of planets, Jupiter, Mars, Mercury, and Venus in Leo in August 27th of 2 BC. Once the Magi saw this sign, they were motivated to embark on their historic caravan to Jerusalem following Jupiter on its westerly course. Once they completed their three to four month trip to Jerusalem, they were directed to Bethlehem in December of 2 BC, where they beheld the seventh Jupiter sign, this time in Virgo, directly over Bethlehem on the meridian. These seven Jupiter signs disclosed all the Magi needed to find their long prophesied savior king and honor him as they had been taught by Daniel and Zoroaster centuries earlier. What we have documented in the last slide regarding Jupiter's activity from August of 3 BC to December of 2 BC is depicted in the graphic on the slide. We find the king planet Jupiter in retrograde motion crowning the king star Regulus in Leo. This retrograde loop of Jupiter occurs due to the Earth's more rapid orbit around the Sun where it catches up and passes Jupiter, causing the planet to look as if it's standing still and reversing its orbital motion. This circular motion crowning Regulus established the identity of the Lion of the tribe of Judah in Leo, especially in Regulus's star name, which is linked to its Hebrew word used in Genesis 49.10. This is a sterling example of how the tenets of biblical astronomy can guide us in unfolding the message of Scripture without private interpretation. As we take note of God's names for the stars in His sky, as we saw earlier in Psalm 147.4, we will see what his word tells us about that star in the context. Sometimes it will be a literal star name, but it could also be figurative, which we'll see an example of next. The text of Revelation 12 reveals the unmistakable details of the birth of Christ like no other scripture in God's word. Verse 1 refers to a sign in heaven, which is a literal reference to a sign of the zodiac in the Greek, not some miracle phenomena that only the Magi could see. God revealed it to them alone due to their faithful diligence to follow the prophet Daniel's teaching in the previous 600 years leading up to these events. Revelation 12.1 refers to a woman, and there is only one female sign on the zodiac, which is Virgo. This is an example of a figurative reference to a constellation being a woman. The text says she would be clothed with the sun, which occurs in Virgo only about 20 days each year. It also refers to the moon at her feet, which happens only one day a year, and you can see this depicted on the graphic on screen. This is from Dr. Martin's book. It's called The Star That Astonished the World, which is one of the great pieces of work that we have used as a reference and kind of a groundbreaking study in this category uh, of the birth of Christ. Another great book along these lines is called Jesus Christ, Our Promised Seed by V.P. Whirlwill. He also took more of a true biblical perspective on things and incorporated a lot of Dr. Martin's astronomy. The graphic from Dr. Martin referring to this shows the woman with the sun in her midsection and the position of the moon moving to her feet on September 11th. Revelation 12 also says this woman was crowned with 12 stars, which can be true from two perspectives. 
First, as the head or first sign of the biblical zodiac, Virgo crowns the 12 signs of the zodiac. But there are also 12 literal stars around the head of Virgo if you look at the actual constellation. So it fits from both ways. Revelation 12 also refers to this woman in labor pains, which nails down the truth of the day that Mary birthed Jesus Christ. Notice how the details of the verse identify the figurative woman in question. And this is the check and balance system that God has set up so that we can work the details of his word with the celestial scriptures.